out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad, and the trailer for the next Assassin's Creed game has just dropped, and I instantly got many requests for me to give it a look and assess it for how accurately it depicts the weapons and armor, because the setting of this new Assassin's Creed game is Vikings! And I am all too happy to comply, as well as offering some of my initial first reactions. Now, I will say, I'm not sure I'll even bother getting this game. It really depends on how well Ubisoft handles the customer service kind of things. I was not too happy with all the grindiness that they added into the last Assassin's Creed game just to try and sell microtransactions, XP boosters. They butchered the structure to just try and milk you for every cent you got and the game ended up being a boring grindy mess. And all the many awesome things that were actually in that game, the cool setting and other things like that, were hidden behind and mired in such crap. So we are yet to see if they will repeat the mistakes of the past, but at the very least we can take a look at this trailer and have a bit of fun in the process. Interesting scene. I wonder if they're perpetuating the myth that the Vikings come from a frozen hellscape, which wasn't the case. Scandinavia actually had a bit of a warmer climate during the Viking period, kind of like a small warm period. So the idea that Vikings went off a raiding because they didn't have enough food, just no, wasn't the case. It'll be interesting to see how well this trailer actually reflects the final product, because Ubisoft generally does, you know, a half-decent job uh, with the settings, okay? With, with like the architecture and depicting historical period pretty well. They did a pretty good job depicting ancient Greece and also Egypt, but the difference between ancient Greece and Egypt is that there is nowhere near as much pop culture popular stereotypes that are associated with them as there are with the Vikings. You pick the Vikings, the medieval period, there are so many incorrect stereotypes that are just lumped in that a lot of developers and even people who make movies think that you just need to add them in to give the right medieval feel, like lots of leather armor and horns on the helmets. Dirt everywhere and people aren't educated, there are so many misconceptions, so it'll be interesting to see how many misconceptions are being perpetuated in this trailer. They are... Okay, interesting. Um, the tunics they're wearing are actually decently accurate. I guess what would be important to establish here is actually the time period, and if you're looking at the Vikings, well, that's about like the 8th century to the 11th century, you could probably push it to the 12th century a bit, and generally people like to go later in the Viking period because that's when some of the weapons and armor are a bit more developed, and depending on what we see depicted here will give me a better indication as to what time period they're focusing on, but off the bat here, the tunics that, you know, the kids here are wearing, they're, they're accurate. Medieval style tunics of the Viking period were actually longer, they generally reach about the knees, but what the other guys are wearing, lots of furs and things, that's, that's a bit more, uh, I don't know, and uh, the architecture, it's passable. Heartless. a bearded viking axe there. Let's see how thick that was, just to uh, get an idea. Oh, it's hard to see how thick it was. Oh no, a bit, uh, probably a bit too thick, uh, if we can see. Is that a, is that a, like a Dane axe right there? It's, it's not the type of axe you'd use for wood cutting. Oh, their armor, what are they wearing? Lots of furs. I wonder, you know, there, there's this stereotypical idea of the Berserker, and one of the, you know, historical interpretations of the Berserker means champion, and one of the identifying marks that people say identified these, you know, if you're going to the more accurate depictions of the Berserker being a champion, not just a mindless, bloodthirsty, insane warrior that huffed, well not huffed, but ate mushrooms, got high in them, and again, a bloodthirsty race. No, but the more historically accurate interpretation of Berserker uh, more generally refers to a champion, and there is this idea associated with them that they wore a bear skin around their shoulders. And I wonder if that's what they're going with. So there's a lot of furs we're seeing here, and to my knowledge, there isn't much evidence to indicate that the Vikings specifically just wore lots of furs. Now, if they did live in a colder climate, 
climate, they would wear warmer clothing, and having something fur lined would make a bit more sense. But what we're seeing here, the fur is actually on the outside, not the inside. All right, if you're going to be wearing fur in with the intent to keep you warm, the fur will be on the inside of the clothing. Something that not a lot of people miss. So this is a very stereotypical misconception that's being perpetuated here. The Vikings and fur, because Vikings. Shields look decent, but uh, they're metal rimmed. That's clearly a metal rimmed here. No, generally the rims were made out of rawhide. Tacked or riveted onto the edge, true. Uh, metal rims... No, that's a misconception. Okay, there are exceptions here and there, but that's not the norm, all right? And I'm getting the impression here that nearly all shields are going to have a metal rim because reasons, and no, in actual fact, historically, it was really useful to have weapons bite into shields. The wood is too thick and resistant to have the weapon chop through it completely, but having the weapons bite into the edges of shields usually can get the weapon stuck in them, and that's an advantage, and so they actually wanted weapons weapons to bite into the edges of shields, and one of the additional things they did to actually encourage this was to make the edges of the shields particularly thin. They tapered, the wood being much thicker towards the centre of the shield, getting thinner towards the edges. And we know this from archaeological finds. Is that Odin? Maybe? Godless barbarians. Well, according to the time period, there were some Vikings that were actually Christians. So, there you go. So historically, the Vikings have a very bad reputation for being murderers, plunderers, pillagers, rapists, and they would capture people and carry them off the slaves and things. What people actually don't understand is that this style of warfare was actually practiced by a decent amount of the cultures of the time period. That was the practice of war. Burning, pillaging, taking your, you know, defeated enemy away as slaves. The Britons did it, the Irish did it, okay? Vikings actually weren't any more nasty than many of the other cultures of the time period. The difference is, they just won more often, okay? Generally, they were just better at it, okay? And because of that, the people who were defeated by them would write about the Vikings in very negative light. But we, no, we have historical records of these other cultures during this time period doing just as nasty things. Now, of course, the Vikings had the reputation of raiding and triggering these, you know, let's just call them conflicts, okay? But they weren't actually the only ones who did did it, they just generally did it a bit more often and were far more successful at it. The dock. Hmm, not seeing much thatched roofs. I don't know, am I just biased to thatched roofings? Mm, Viking longships, okay, and you know, it's it's kind of hard to get Viking longships wrong. Uh, they're very iconic in their design. And again, the fur around the shoulders, it's just becoming a fetish almost these days. Is that, look at all the leather he's wearing. I have issues with leather armor, all right? There is, of course, evidence of leather armor existing in the medieval period, but I still hold the opinion that it wasn't very prevalent, and at the times where it was used were not representative of the whole medieval period or every single culture location in the medieval period. And if we were to think the Vikings specifically, there are a lot of economical and just production-based factors that would really work against the Vikings using leather armor so prevalently as being depicted here, if at all. And if you want to know what those reasons are, I would recommend my video, Gambersons vs. Leather Armor. I think that was the title, or something close to that. But seriously, leather would be more expensive, more valuable, you'd be using it for a lot of other things before armor, it's harder to repair with, and you have a material that's already being mass-produced and can be easily recycled, reused, repurposed with linen and wool that can offer adequate protection when you layer it up enough times or you just use mail okay and so a more accurate depiction of a viking is going to be a viking who's wearing a wool or a linen tunic perhaps layered to give some measure of protection which 
essentially qualifies as a gambeson in my opinion, or just good old male. Chain mail, okay? Not leather armor. And if people are gonna say there's no evidence for Vikings wearing gambeson or layered textile type armor, I'll say, well there's even less evidence for Vikings wearing leather armor. And so if you're gonna pick between the two, I'd say it's a much safer bet to depict them in some type of linen textile armor, if not just male. And that would only be if they're far more wealthy. Okay, uh, left, you know, the frozen wasteland to arrive at a paradise, okay, so, I mean, it's kind of odd, you'd think if uh, Scandinavia was in the winter area, like, you know, season, that Britain would be in winter too, it's like they, tra their travel took half a year and now they're suddenly in summer or spring. Oh, this place has thatch roofs. Is that because it's just easier to burn? Vikings, no thatch roofs. They're not allowed it. They murder and kill blindly. Oh, that's rather nice of them. Sparing, sparing the women. But if they were going to spare them, they'd probably just tie them up and carry them off as slaves. Just saying. But wow, we see the thickness of that axe of his. That is a very, that's a thick axe, okay? No, no. Historically, axe heads are actually very thin to be far more functional. And we get a bit of close-up of his armor. And again, yeah, it's just leather armor garbage. Just stuff. And his shield. No, no. Vikings, like, look, of course, I'm sure somewhere in the past a Viking might have strapped a shield onto his arm, but more predominantly, they're all center-gripped, okay? That boss thing in the center of the shield was to provide a cavity to actually have the handle and your fist. At least his beard was groomed. There's actually archaeological findings of, uh, from, you know, Viking Scandinavian areas and stuff like that, of uh, combs and things. They were a well-groomed people. And I suppose I should mention the whole thing about what does Viking mean? mean, the very word. It's more widely debunked, and I think that is actually due to good old YouTubers spreading the truth that uh, Viking is a term of a profession, not a term of a people in its more correct context. In fact, uh, to go on a Viking was uh, actually, Viking isn't like a descriptive word, to, you could say go on a Viking and that would mean to go on a raid, but not necessarily just a raid. To go on a Viking is also to mean to kind of go on an adventure, almost, I'm being a bit more loose with that definition. And that is one of the uses of the word Viking. So these guys, they definitely look like Vikings, but could the Scandinavian farmers be Vikings because of the Viking people? Uh, if we're being very specific with the wording, no. You would have to go on a Viking to be a Viking, or you have to be a Viking to be a Viking, and a farmer's not a Viking. But also, I do subscribe to the fact that language evolves, and, you know, people are starting to just use the word to mean Scandinavian people of the early-ish medieval period that had, you know, parts of their culture, people going off on raids and stuff. So anyway, that, that's what I'll say on that matter. Burning villages, and it's up river. Gee, I wonder if they're going to be depicting actual British kind of locations, like old school London on the Thames and stuff. And if this is after the Battle of Hastings, he would be fighting against maybe William the Conqueror, or maybe one of his sons? That'd be a really interesting setting to depict, and I, I wish, I hope that they'll, they'll do it accurately. But this could be based before then, it really depends. We don't actually know the time period just yet. Ah, uh, strapped on shield. Strapped on sh I don't like it! It's one of the most basic things. I hope this is just a mistake with the cinematic and it's not going to be in the game. But, I mean, it was a decent shield to slap, and uh, we see a guy getting subbed, he's got a, you know, a nasal helm, skull cap nasal helm. That looks a bit Norman, actually, though. And I wonder if this is based around the 11th century, then. They scar the lands of England. Ah, okay, playing with the kids. Interesting transition. But it's like they're settling here now, so... If this is actually, if that would, if they were depicting the, in, you know, Viking invasions of Britain, that would be before the Battle of Hastings, setting up the kind of Anglo-Saxon culture of uh, pre-Norman England. Lands they will never defend, never love. The time has come. 
very Christian imagery here, and I mean, depending on the time period, like William the Conqueror, he was a devout Christian, so I, again, it really will depend on the time period, wouldn't it? What is this guy? Is that leather armor again? Gosh. It's like so many people just have a fetish for the medieval period. It has to have leather. Throw in leather everywhere. At least there's lighting inside of this castle, cathedral thing with candles. Okay, you know, yeah. To speak to them in a language they will understand. Yep, that is definitely a type of leather armor. I don't like it. And seriously, if this guy is like a more wealthy kind of servant to a king or something, which it, it looks like it, he'd be wearing chainmail. Like seriously, that is the, the, the creme de la creme of like, you know, armor of around the Viking Age, okay? For a high up kind of soldier servant like this wearing leather or even just textile armor over mail would just be ridiculous. It's just, yeah. Metal, full metal braces like that? Well, I mean, they could make metal helmets, so it's not outside of their technological possibility, but it, no, it's not a uh, type of armor we see in this period. We could see certain type of metal strips uh, on braces, sometimes leather braces to hold on metal kind of um, protections there, but more often that would just be like mail. He cheated, he had gloves on, that wasn't nearly as cool as doing its bare skin, mate. Oh, eh, long ships, in a fog, okay, and uh, fur, fur everywhere, fur and leather. Just not how Vikings looked. And why are they, why isn't any of them wearing helmets? It's like the most vulnerable part. Of Seriously, I mean, if, you, if you're going to go up, like from a poor, you know, or soldier, a Viking or whatever, who's going to go into war and you needed to equip yourself, all right? Weapon, probably the first course of action and it's going to be shield. All these guys should be using, holding shields, okay? Uh, look, Dane Axe's two-handed, so, you know, maybe the odd Dane Axeman uh, could get away not having a shield, but that would only be in if he was fighting in formations, not an open melee. But okay, after your weapon, uh, you would want to get armor. And the first bit of armor that you want to get, in my opinion, is a helmet. Helmet before even, like, any type of textile and mail. No, no, you protect your head. Helmet first. Where's the helmets, guys? Ooh, there's a cut-up face. Got a little, t a few tussles there, mate. Oh, no. no, I got the fire arrows. <laughs> there are several layers of stupidity with this right here. I mean, because like, okay, um, they were coming in under fog. So what, there was an army just waiting there in these this exact position. They knew where the Vikings were going to, you know, maybe because, all right, it's near a settlement. But still, how would they know exactly the location? Because even if they knew that, you know, this settlement was going to be raided by Vikings, there's still a lot of shoreline the Vikings could land on. And having an army specifically right in front of it, okay, so, so that's dumb. And the fact that the Vikings came under fog, so they wouldn't even be able to see him. So you can't see the army from this angle. So that would also mean the army shouldn't be able to see the Vikings. They wouldn't even, maybe the sound, uh, you know, clue them off onto them. But you would think if they want to wipe out the Vikings, shooting fire arrows, you know, these bright light, like, look how brightly they're lighting the sky, is a bit of a uh, warning to the Vikings. It's letting them know that arrows are arcing down towards them. If they actually wanted to kill the Vikings, this is why it's fire arrows. They're, they're dumb on many levels. Uh, they're actually far more difficult to make work. And even when you do get the work, which you can make them work with specific special arrowheads and things like that, they really ever set fire to anything, okay? If they're landing on damp thatch and things like that, and in, you know, Britain and stuff like that, it's generally known for being a bit of a more wet, colder climate. They really set fire to anything, and they're more expensive, and oftentimes they can snuff out on the loosing of the arrows. And 
They can alert your enemies that they're being shot fired upon from a distance. And which seems to be exactly what's happening here. They're looking up. Oh, there's something bright in the sky. They're looking up. Oh, there's arrows coming towards us. I wonder what we should do now. Maybe raise our shields and protect ourselves, which we wouldn't have known of if they weren't shooting fire arrows. We wouldn't have been clued off, warned of the impending danger happening, and we wouldn't be able to protect ourselves. Yep, yep, exactly, you know, any sane person, they see our fire arrows arcing towards them, you'll protect yourselves, but they've never been able to see it because they're fire arrows, that's, that's so dumb, it's such a cliche now that everyone thinks that if you're shooting many evil arrows, they must be fire arrows because fire arrows, what, they do more damage to a person when they're shooting, no, no they won't, in actual fact, there's specific type of arrowheads that can be made to make fire arrows work more consistently, have far less penetrative power, if they were landing in, like, hitting a person, okay? A regular bodkin head, or broadhead, if you're not shooting against certain, like, metal armored male. Broadheads aren't as good against male armored. But anyway, any of those arrowheads would be way more effective uh, than the, the special type of arrowheads that f to make fire arrows. They're, they're, look, they're, they're, like I said, there are several layers of stupid with, uh, you know, this use of fire arrows in this depiction, and fire arrows more generally, even though there are certain exceptions you might might be able to use fire arrows under certain conditions, but the fact that fire arrows are used everywhere whenever a medieval warfare is being used so often is stupid! See the type of wadding they have on the end of the arrow here like that? Unless it's coated in a fairly flammable kind of, you know, mixture, maybe pitch with sulfur or something like that, okay? They would usually snuff out. If you're just wrapping it in cloth, lighting it, all right? The, the, the fire snuffs out as soon as you loose it from an arrow. Uh, look, I can't tell if it's been soaked in pitch or not, but it looks like it hasn't. Look at that leather armor, and it looks really thin. It's not like... The thing is, this is the other stupid thing about pop culture interpretations of leather armor, because when leather armor was used, it was hardened into really rigid plates. There was some flexibility in it, but it's actually really thick and rigid, because that's how you get the protective value out of leather, okay? If it's thin, pliable, and flexible like we're seeing here, it's dress leather, and would barely stop spit, and would, you'd actually have far more protection from thick wool or linen than this crap. But that's what we're showing here. And what is up with the, just these metal kind of, like, the, they would have to be decorative, okay? Because to hope that they would offer any measure of protection is dumb, all right? No. So mm, I'm angry. They shot on me. And they're burning my boat. I, I can't do Scandinavian accent. I'm not even going to try. Wow. The boats are, like, fully ablaze with these, no, those fire arrows, all right? Just, let's, let's go back a bit. See how they're sticking into this guy? This is one of the other problems with fire arrows, okay? Uh, if you wrap it around the arrow head, usually if they get launched into something, the head sticks in something, and the burning part of the arrow actually doesn't touch what it landed into. I mean, look at the shield behind in the background here, okay? The arrowhead's sticking in, but the actual flammable portion is barely even touching. And because of that, barely any of these arrows would actually set fire to anything, because barely any of the fire is actually licking the, you know, timber, and it's too small a flame to set a large chunk of timber on fire. They wouldn't set a fire this boat, and um, they might singe the sails a little bit, but they're in damp fog for crying out loud, and so everything would be damp and would barely catch a light. But instead, the, these ships are just fully ablaze. Whoa, 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 whoa. We saw s oh kite shields. Ki Look, I love me some kite shields. Kite shield is my favorite shield. I I even have a video on this channel called the kite shield versus every other shield in the world. Like so legit. I love the kite shield. Okay, and uh, the reason why I'm pausing here, this technically should give us a bit more of an accurate pinpoint of the time period. And with kite shields, we are looking at the 10th or 11th century here. Um, uh, if you're looking at like, you know, 8th century, because kite shields, no, they weren't around in the 8th century, which is kind of the beginning of the Viking period around there, or late 8th century, 9th century, a bit. Okay, just charging in, like, no formations, no shield walls, it's just a chaotic melee. 
It's a very dumb way to wage war and a good way to lose a lot of men. You have shields for a reason and form up in formations, okay? And the Vikings did fight that way, all right? They made shield walls. They even used complex shield wall formations and stuff. But uh, just chaotic melee. Maybe they weren't, I don't know. Maybe they weren't ready for it and it just, just run in and form it. Like, that's the, that's the same main guy, and so we've already seen him with a strap shield. I'm looking at this other guy. Is that center grip? His fist looks a bit more in the center of the shield. I don't know. It's hard to tell. But, oof, oof. If these Vikings aren't using center grip shields. See, he got a quiver of arrows at his side. That looks like a quiver of arrows. That's just, what, backup stuff? Where's his bow, then? Helmet on that soldier looks interesting. Looks more Greek. If it's like, you know, a Greco style hard to tell maybe we'll get a better shot of it at a different angle oh decapitation was that with an axe Whew. the axe has a very small striking ratio like in, in comparison to say a sword which has the full length of its blade that you can strike with so generally it's harder to you know, aim so precisely to lop off a head completely but hey this guy is skilled oh and again so chaotic gosh I mean, it'd be hard to tell who is who, which is why, you know, the whole thing of heraldry started to be, you know, um, uh, practice so you could tell who was who. And there was a prototype of heraldry during the Viking period with the patterns that they painted on their shields. Ah, uh, finally, something that I can compliment on. Someone's using spears. And, you know, I like the, uh, a lot of axes, and it seems to me that the axes and spears are being more in greater representation than the swords. Which is good, but there should actually be more spears than axes even, because the spear is a, was a primary weapon of the Vikings, by the way. Whoa, right through him. Uh, gosh, apparently he wasn't wearing leather armor. Might have been able to save himself. Okay, is that leather cuirass over mail? And then still straight through. I mean... Mail is not as resistive to thrusts like that, which is one of the advantages of spears. So this one isn't nearly as egregious if someone just chops through mail completely, because mail is actually really strong against chops. Oh, lifts him up completely and just drops him. And then this guy again. Look at that helm. That's a that's a very odd looking Roman Greek style helmet. At least it's wearing mail. There's a, there's a full hauberk there, but it's split on the sides. That's not good. That leaves your thigh open completely, mate. <laughs> Sorry, he's the leader. He, this guy is clearly like a commander thing, and is technically wearing worse armor than some of the guys. The other guys, at least they're wearing chainmail. You've just got this crappy leather breastplate. Unless, wait, is, is it mail there on his arm? Don't know. Hard to tell. Nah, it's not. That was cloth. And look at that guy's helmet. Are they basing this in an early-ish kind of period, like 8th century, and trying to portray that there is still some Roman kind of design influences happening here? Because look at the floof on his on his helmet. And yes, that's the, that's the technical term for it, floof. Very Greco-Roman. Very Greco-Roman and not very medieval. That strikes me as anachronistic for this time period myself. <laughs> I just like seeing kite shields. Kite shields make me happy. Maybe that could balance out with these uh, strapped on round shields. And at least this guy has mail, like less leather. Ooh, is that a Danax? And it, it doesn't look like an authentic Danax, but a two-handed axe. At least it's not double bitted, single bitted. Good, a bit better. All right in the side and we get a bit of more of a close up. Look how thick that axe head. That would be insanely heavy, like ridiculously so. And at least the soldier with the spear is wearing full mail, okay. Well, that guy's just tank. He's just grabs him by the face and throws him like a ragdoll. Is there a spike on that axe? Oh, it kind of is. It's, it's a little spike. Whoa! Screw the spike, the whole axe just <laughs> sinks into the guy, through his mail and everything, look at that! Axe head there, axe head disappears, it's just, it's just buried! It's crap. The top of the axe head was blunt, to my understanding. Gosh! 
Uh, and he gets stabbed through the back, all through his mail and everything like that. Yeah, like, to get through mail and all the flesh to stick out the other end, it's technically not best. Like, spears, historically, they had things on them called wings to prevent over-penetration because you can, your weapon can actually get stuck in your target, okay? You don't want over-penetration with a spear. You want it to penetrate enough to do the job, to kill him. But, so, get it, like, look, it looks cool having a, you know, a spear going right through someone to the other side. But it's actually not ideal. It's not what you want. And even though wing spears, also called boar spears, by the way, uh, actually weren't around during, like, Viking periods. But they added two spears to prevent over-penetration and getting your weapon stuck in whatever you're skewering. <laughs> <laughs> and that does look like it hit the opening in the helmet, so it's not going through the metal. Yeah, that would kill someone. Yeah, with how thick that axe head and how big it is, oh, it'd be so heavy. And um, I was wrong, that's not actually a spike, not a proper spike, but they were trying to show that they are being used by spikes. But anyway, like, the adornments and spikes on the location of these axes is a much later period addition to axe heads, okay? Uh, Viking-style axes of the Viking period of the, uh, you know, 10th, 11th century? No. <laughs> Another close-up of his armor and all that leather on him. Caudic melee again. And, like, who's protecting this guy? I mean, if enough of the Vikings just grouped together and charged him, because if he wanted to observe a battlefield, it would have worked a lot better if he could observe them from behind a line of troops in proper formation, and he would be far more protected. Oh, who's this guy? He's wearing, what, scale armor? And his helmet's interesting, that kind of nasal and eyebrow attachment, that's actually a uh, Anglo-Saxon stylish design, but then it's been combined with almost Roman-esque kind of, the, like the flaps on the side here, that's very Roman-like on the Centurion-style helmets, a bit of a mismatch. Okay, there are troops that the guy on the horse is just sitting in front of, what? Why aren't they doing anything? Just happy watching? There's a lot of guy, your own guys getting killed down there. Where's your shield gone, mate? I don't remember seeing him lose it, but there's a lot of dead guys around. Pick up one of their shields, okay? But no, he's, he's gone to dual wielding because it's kill all. Yeah, his armor is just fantasy garbage. There is very little historically authentic about that. Yeah, bash. Bash and chop. It's Merlin! Come to help! Gee, kind of does look like Merlin, or, you know, I don't know, Viking-ish Merlin. Who's also wearing a fur around his shoulders, because it's, it's just the fashion. The Vikings, it's just, just their fashion. Did he become the bird? Odin, it's with us. If you say so, mate, it doesn't really look like it. Hang on. Is, it, is that a warhammer? Like a solid metal chunk on the end of a stick because uh, wow that would be insanely heavy and I know in fantasy it's so popular really pop culture movies and things they misidentify actual proper historical authentic war hammers and mauls or mallets okay mallet is the one-handed kind of version of a maul you could say which were made out of wood not solid metal but I guess it looks cool and yes metal rims around the shields because Ooh, the big guy's coming. Look at all that scale metal armor he's wearing. Ooh, we get a close-up of sword here, and that is... Yes, that's a Viking-style sword! I mean, the, the, the upper guard it looks a bit, bit bigger, okay? But overall, that's actually pretty good. It's look, looking like a good, accurate sword. Good to see. Hang on, that sword that this guy is carrying, that looks huge! Is that a two-handed sword? Let's, let's see if this is confirmed. He's, he's grabbing it with two hands. Oh, hang on. Let's just, let's just watch this, uh, action and, uh... And... <laughs> Sorry. 
Oh, it, ah, it is a two-headed sword. All right, look, there's an incoming rant about that, but um, that hit was comical. Look, it looked cool. Let's watch that again. Wow, there is, there is a wind-up and telegraph right there. Like, whoa. and then, push. <laughs> sorry, it's funny because sword blades don't have a lot of mass in them okay they're, they're very thin so they can cut effectively and uh, to hit someone with such force that you could knock them off their feet okay and then knock them several meters distance would more likely damage the sword bend it if not break it than actually transferring all that energy to your target okay because swords are thin when they hit something that they can't penetrate and they clearly didn't penetrate the guy because he's not chopped in two so i blocked it on a weapon or something like that the additional pressure or force that you would exert onto the blade will cause it to twist then bend then break okay it's not a solid rod that you can just transfer so much force into a target like a baseball bat it's not a club and so for me who you know understands a little bit about how swords function that's why <laughs> that shot there was just comical. I laughed at it. And I, like, I it, it looks cool, all right? But when you know how swords work, it's just like, no, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> if it was a fantasy sword, maybe, I don't know. But it is borderline because most people don't understand swords fully and it looked cool enough. And so maybe I'll let that part slide just for the coolness factor. Still very unrealistic. Oh. And yes, it is a massive two-handed sword. Okay, we get a better shot of... That is like a full-on 14th, 15th century longsword slash war sword because of how hefty that blade looks. That is so profound profoundly anachronistic for the Viking period. Now, of course, caveats, it's possible that a large hand sword might have existed somewhere. To my knowledge, we have not found a single bit of evidence showing proper two-handed swords from this period, especially archaeological evidence. No archaeological evidence remains any swords found but this shot here with his roman like helmet with anglo-saxon kind of fittings with weird scale mail using a sword that it, like even the guard is stylized like it's from a later period it's like we're seeing a shot of a time traveler who traveled three four hundred years into the future okay depending on where in the viking period this game is set grabbed a weapon of three four hundred years ahead like in the future brought it back into this period because that's what that is, okay? This is as anachronistic as seeing a modern-day assault rifle in the 1700s, okay? That's how far removed that longsword is technically from the period in which this is set in. And that's only if this Viking period is set in, like, the 10th or 11th century, and not, say, the 8th or 9th century. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, that guy just takes out the sword like a... Beast! Gosh, look how big that is a huge like I I don't get me wrong, I love my two-handed swords, okay? But this is so out of period. Oh! Hang on! Did we just see armor working? <laughs> it's like are they actually showing armor doing something here? Whoa! <laughs> I, I have such mixed feelings. I don't know what to say. Like, I love that armor is working, but the problem is the armor he's wearing isn't plate armor, okay? This guy is swinging such a heavy, thick axe, okay, that the blunt force just from that blow would wind the guy. I mean, the guy is so tanky, he just pull out a sword skewering his leg. So, great, he's obviously a tank, and I suppose he could just tank it, because, I mean, if a strike is hit on the flat scales, more often than not, because scale mail isn't perfect, that you can actually break through certain scales and still penetrate. 
But if it hits flat enough on the scales, it can prevent penetration from an axe blow, and then you'll just be hit with the blunt force trauma and be winded, if not crack a few ribs, with the force that that's hitting. So I have issues with that, but because this is a tank, I suppose he can just survive it. And then the fact we are seeing, you know, a weapon bounce off armor and we're shown armor working, I'm ecstatic about that! And yet, because of the blunt force is like... Ugh. <laughs> They've given me my cake, but haven't allowed me to eat it. So I'm just, I'm deflated. It's like, I want to be excited, but I can't because... It's like, oh, gee, what are you doing to me, Ubisoft? But still, it's worth watching again. Boom! And then... Interesting. Instead of swinging with his sword, because his, his elbow is there, and I see where his elbow is. Okay, the guy has no guard up. Okay. And so... Instead of hitting with his elbow, he could have just continued the swing through and chopped his head off. But, you know, choreography, you know, realistic sword fighting moves is a thing, people. And if you want to know what I mean, go check out my fight scene autopsy playlist. And again, like, instead of swinging the, you know, sword forward, he decides to spin, exposing his back. And he misses. He, yeah, looks like he just missed. Guess is not so great after all. And just tanking it. And is he even is he even behaving like that sword is weighs a ton and is swinging around like a club. And it's just again, it's just so funny to see this such a big sword in this period. Boom! That guy is a tank! I mean, from this position, he could have just run him through with his big sword. Is he playing with him, toying with him? I'm so strong, I'll headbutt you instead of killing you. Well, you know, I have a feeling the tank guy is going to die anyway. But there were so many opportunities that he could have prevented that. So his, his hubris has brought him down. Hoisted up on his own petard. Has everyone just stopped fighting? They just want to watch now. Like the Vikings and the guys in red. So no, no, no. We'll, we'll just watch. Okay. Okay. Maybe this guy is a time traveler. You know, I mean, with the Assassin's Creed thing, they do have you know, aliens, you know, or alien artifacts and other things like that. Maybe, maybe this guy is from the future. He's asking for permission? Maybe because it's the leader. It's like, do you want me to capture the leader? And if that's the case, maybe that's why I was toying with him as well. You want to interrogate him? You want to ransom him? That doesn't look like the uh, the leader cares. That That's like, yeah, go ahead and kill him. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, we see that. And right through the eye. Here's an assassin. Ooh, there's a nice bloody shot, and this video is going to get demonetized. Oh well. Yes, the assassin's dagger was there all along. Yeah, your champion wasn't so tough after all. What is the soul of man? And there we go, that's the reveal, or launch, launch, reveal, trailer, of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And I have to say, the depictions of the Vikings look mostly like fantasy garbage. You know, like Ubisoft, they usually do their research with at least some of the historical depiction that they're trying to do, but they've really fallen into the desire of depicting the cliche, stereotypical, fantasy, bullcrap Viking in uh, an actual historical time period, no doubt. So, I haven't seen any gameplay, and look, I have to admit, the idea of an Assassin's Creed Viking setting is appealing if they were able to execute it properly, and I'm not seeing very promising signs so far. So, that's very unfortunate, a bit of a waste. We'll have to wait and see. But there we go, that's my commentary and review of what we've seen in this uh, reveal launch trailer thingy. And it was mostly a mess. Still, it was fun to pick apart and I hope you have enjoyed. Of course, I hope to see you again. So until then, farewell.